I'm sorry. I don't need no break. No, it's right. I love our older brothers and sisters to open the way for me, man. So that I can be on stage. Glad they marched and all that stuff that they call being over time. I'm glad they marched. So I can be on HBO and do a show. Because you do whatever you got to do to survive. If I'd have been a slave, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I've been a house Negro. Y'all have hated me. I'd have been inside. Master Johnson, they try to run. Y'all better come back. Master Johnson, see y'all behind that tree? Who y'all think y'all are? <laughs> Brothers would have hated me. I'd be in the kitchen looking at eating sandwiches. <laughs> Living in the field. You ain't coming in this house. <laughs> One day the master said, Send me a go out there and get some wood. Ooh. I can't go out there, Master Johnson. Them ain't my people's. Use my people. <laughs> yeah, man, the 70s was a trip, man. 70s was a different time, man. See, you know why I think it's wrong with the kids, all this shooting and stuff? They got too much stuff. We ain't had nothing to kill nobody for in the 70s. Did nobody want your raggedy jacket? You ain't nothing to see about kill nobody over a Kmart jacket. Give me your raggedy, no zipping up jacket. Here, take it. I was hoping somebody get this jacket. You can take off your jacket in the 70s, leave it on the ground. People will be cold walking around there. I ain't wearing that jacket. <laughs> Kids have everything now. Y'all got everything. Teenagers, y'all don't know. Y'all even know what y'all got. Got so much stuff, y'all be in the room. Oh, I forgot about this. You didn't forget about nothing in the 70s. You knew everything was. There's my one sock. There's my one nice shirt. I look at kids now. See, kids get to pick out their own clothes. See, teenage, y'all go, y'all go to the mall. You get to pick your own stuff out. And I'm gonna buy me. Some, how you gonna buy some hundred and fifty dollar jeans? You ain't got no job. Your parents making four hundred a week. They make it because they can't buy no clothes for themselves. Parents make it. Y'all just get something. We we can't buy nothing for us. I can't see asking my mother for no cross colors back in the seventies. Can you see that, mom? Mom? Can you give me some new crop? <laughs> you get off the ground. Mama, you ain't let me finish. I said, can we go across the street? <laughs> go to Kmart, get some pants over there. They weren't going to buy you no $150 pants. Matter of fact, you weren't even allowed to go shopping, remember? You weren't even allowed to go shopping. Now you got clothes in the 70s. You come home from school and your stuff would be on the bed. You'd be like, Mama! I can't wear this like a shirt. I don't wear that shirt, Bob. I'm just saying. My mother be coming upstairs. <laughs> hey, Mister, don't have a job, can't buy nothing for himself. You ain't got to wear the shirt, and we'll take the clothes away from you. Make you beg for the ugly shirt. I have to go to my mother's bedroom. Mom, can I have this shirt back? Mom, please, mom. Mom, I know you hear me, mom. My mother, I thought it was ugly. No, I said, I wish I could wear it today. That's what I was saying. I was so excited. I said, I can't wear it yet. That's what I was saying. Let's make you put them ugly clothes on, man. The Jay Thomas Show is now on the air. Won't you tune in and break off that dial? He'll tell you his tales and he'll in a few guests, though you probably won't know who they are. The Jay Thomas Show. Listen to the Jay Thomas Show. Live like you're on vacation. Listen to the Jay Thomas Show. Give yeah, us time for uh, One of the uh, one of the big things that's happened in in this. Uh, can you hear me okay, Christina? I, I've been fooling with the room all morning. That sounds fine to you? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, and by the way, Sirius uh, uh, XM and uh, and Don, who we always talk about, sent me a like a it was like a brand new computer. I know. I've been hearing about it all day. Brand wow, it's a big deal. To oh, it's unbelievable. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, the colors are bright. Uh, all of it. How's and the other the, the other computer. The time work? Oh, 
it's it's the right year. Maybe you're a Everything. little over-modulated. Maybe turn it's, it down just a smidge. I will. I got, I got excited. I got excited. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, so one of the big things that happened is we had uh, Diamond and Silk on, and there are the uh, uh, t two women that are just so excited about uh, Donald Trump. And then the other night on, uh, I guess, CNN, uh, they were talking. And, and, you know, the Trump campaign, I believe the reason why it's doing so well is, first of all, the Republicans themselves have been saying how terrible everything is and how this political correctness is out of hand. I mean, they've been doing it for years, the last few years, and that people need to stand up and take action. And uh, it's all veiled. But it means like, you know, somebody's coming in that's illegal. You know, there's no like gray. Throw him the fuck out. Get him out. Like that. Uh, somebody's coming in here that we think might be, you know, unsafe. Throw him out. Throw him out. This is what, what, um, and you know, the Democrats, and, and I have trouble with it too. You know, they're going, well, let's talk it over and we can't throw everybody out and all that. And, and even as Democrats, we sometimes go, you know, you know, cut it out. Cut it up. And, and, and then all of these, you know, uh, battles over everything. So finally, uh, a diamond and silk uh, come out and they say all of the things. And, and, uh, as two African American women, they, they basically speak for white, black, Hispanic, everybody. And they say, you know, this is what everybody wanted and, and this is why we're for them. Do you have them on CNN, Christina? I yes, I do. Hey, let me hear them. Marco Rubio told us to Google Donald Trump, but I did one better. Mm -hmm. I Googled him. Mm -hmm. And when I Googled him, you know, he owes America and the gay community an apology That's because right. it sounds like that he may have had a gay life lifestyle in his past. What? Mm -hmm. So what? he owes people an apology. No, yes. what not? All you have to do, all you have to do is Google mm -hmm. him. Google him and you will see that. Well, well that's what's on Google. Mm -hmm. So you have to be cautious when you wow. tell people to Google people. Stop to come up now. We don't so, know so, the truth, so we'll say allegedly. Yeah. But he shouldn't have told people to Google Donald mm -hmm. because well, I Googled we did. Him we did our own fact up. check. We did our own fact check, Rochelle, and we found that Donald Trump did indeed hire workers from outside of the United States to work in his various hotels and Mar-a-Lago and Palm Beach, and he did okay. it because. Okay. All right, that's good. That's good. We wanted to hear the first one. Uh, Diamond and Silk, welcome back to the Jay Thomas Show. How are you? Hello. Hold on one quick second. <laughs> All right, we're good. Yeah. Hello, Diamond and Silk. It's Jay Thomas. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Well, we're good. We're good. Uh, and so, you know, I'll tell you something. Um, a couple of years ago, if you'd have said that you thought maybe somebody lived the gay lifestyle, you'd have been in real trouble. But instead, you just move forward, don't you? Well, yeah, we just move forward. You know, whenever you Google people, you got to be cautious when you tell people to Google other people. That's right. Then they start Googling you and finding out stuff about you that may or may not be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now, who were those two women, by the way? Who were those ladies? Who that was on CNN? Yeah, who were they? That was Diamond and Silk. Right there, that was Diamond and Silk. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. The two announcer ladies. Who were they? The two announcer ladies. What, two in the, the one that announced it? Well, yeah, the women from CNN. Do you know who they are? Well, that was, I know that one was Carol Costello. That's the one I know. Okay. And she was trying to get you to stop saying it. And she kept saying, uh, you know, no, and, or she was saying a net or whatever the deal was. And it, it's like, now, um, you, you know, if you say, if you say gay or whatever to a Democrat, we don't care. But if you say gay lifestyle, to a conservative or a Republican or, or a v evangelical, that is a big deal, isn't it? Well, it is a big deal. And we'll say allegedly because we don't know everything that we read on the Internet if it's true. Mm -hmm. We'll say allegedly. You know, Marco Rubio... But he does look, he does, Rubio does look kind of soft and cuddly, doesn't he? Well, I, I just know he wears small heels and he sweats a lot, but... That doesn't say, you know, I listen. Here's the deal. When you walk around as a conservative and you lose your religion to bash someone else's lifestyle, and then we Google you and you you end up with the same lifestyle, 
allegedly, you know, that's the problem. That's the issue. Now, you what know? is it? What is it you saw on Google that said that uh, you felt as though he might have had a gay lifestyle? Well, they showed some kind of picture where he was in a bathtub full of, uh, we say allegedly, full of uh, bottle with a bunch of men. And then they start talking about how he was arrested at some kind of, um, some kind of gay park. You have to Google it. Yeah, Google it. Mm-hmm. Now, now, did, is is it look true, or does it look like somebody just put it up there to try and, you know, smear him? Look, it looks like it may be true, and then it may not be true. You know, I don't okay. know. What I'm saying, right. I had to make a point. You know, you're, sure. you're on national television telling people to Google Donald Trump. He should Google his own self. You know, Marco Rubio, we should disavow him because he is the same American a career politician that's an American uh, uh, immigrant that's mm-hmm. an American that took and brought in people on H-1B visas, mm-hmm. took them down there to Disney, had those Americans train those people, and then those people took those American people jobs. That's right. You know. Wow, I, Marco Rubio, Marco Rubio did all that. Yes, I'm tired of these career politicians working for their right. own greed and not the need of people. That's right. Now, and what he, about uh, wait a second? What, what about Donald Trump? They said he used uh, illegal immigrants to, you know, cut the grass and work there at his his big country club and everything. Donald Trump didn't do that. Donald he Trump didn't. hired the contractors, and if Donald Trump got in the wind that something wasn't right, then he corrected that. that. Yeah, he had. I mean you. You guys are really dedicated to him. It's, it's, I mean, do you think that Donald Trump has, has any friends like, uh, Diamond and Silk? Well, I hope he does. Yes. Well, I don't think he does. I don't think he does. What about that wife of his? What about, she could barely speak English and she's from Slovenia or whatever. I mean, I mean, she is beautiful, but she can be, and, and she said she didn't want him to say pussy anymore. She said that the other night. First of all, you cannot talk about our future first lady. That's right. You can't talk about Wow. All right. Don't talk about, don't talk about her. Do not talk about our future first lady. That's right. Okay. Don't talk about her. And, and and if she talked to her husband, about things yeah. that concerns her, that's her right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, I got you. Right. Now, you know what? Um, I, I, I am not disappointed, but a lot of people are. Are you, do you find uh, Barack Obama, and I'm sure you voted for him eight years ago, you know, historic thing, you know, African American man uh, makes it the president of the United States and all that stuff. Are you sorry uh, that, that he was the president, or, or would you vote for him if he could run again? Oh, I would not vote for him again. I'm mm-hmm. disappointed. Yeah. But, you know, we don't yeah. cry over spilled milk. That's right. We bring somebody in like a Donald Trump that can clean up the milk yeah. and get this mm-hmm. country to move in again. That's right. So, you know what I would think right off the bat? If, if two black women are unhappy with the black president, I would think he probably didn't do enough of government spending and 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 give you guys the break that you that you think you deserve and everything else and and more money and and more <laughs> welfare in the community. That's what I would have thought. So, but, but you you don't like him for conservative reasons. The reason why the thing about uh, uh, Barack Obama is. Mm-hmm. You know, with him, with him being in the African American community, mm-hmm. unemployment rate among the African American is extremely high. Yeah, you would have thought he would have brought in opportunity. Yeah, African Americans is not looking for handouts; they're looking for a hand up. <laughs> right, they mm-hmm. want the same opportunities as everybody else. Yeah, stop outsourcing trying these trade deals to outsource our good jobs. That's right. Bring our jobs yeah. back where people can thrive again in this country. Yes. Yeah. So when I look at uh, Barack Obama, I'm disappointed. Mm-hmm. I don't cry over the spilled milk. Yeah. Get somebody in that can clean it up, and baby, that's why we stopped for Trump, and we're gonna be voting for him. That's right. So, so Trump is gonna um, make sure that more stuff is made in the United States, right? Absolutely. That's what right. I want. And he's gonna stop a lot of the, the the whatever it is overseas, and and uh, force companies to to bring all the work back to the U.S., and then more Americans will be at work, right? We'll, we'll have decent jobs. Not right. underemployed, but gainfully. Can, can I ask a Can I ask a question? The shoes you're wearing. What did you What do you think you paid for the shoes you're wearing? Um, let me see. Well, it depends on which pair I wear. Well, the ones you have on right now. What'd you pay? Well, for? I got hot shoes on right now. 
So That's I probably fun. take maybe about the twelve bucks for these shoes I have on. You pay you pay twelve dollars for your shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, right. And is, is that diamond? That's diamond, right? That's diamond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And silk. What did you pay for the the blouse you're wearing right now? You remember what you paid for it? I can't recall exactly what I paid for, but get to the point. What's the point? Well, what I'm saying is, is those twelve dollars shoes, and let's say that whatever the whatever the price of the blouse is, thirty bucks, a hundred bucks, or whatever, mm -hmm. they couldn't make it in the United States. Uh, there's no shoe company in the United States, by the way. You can, you can't make it in the United States if um, we 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 screwed the pooch, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Whether you, and I would love to see it happen too. But your twelve dollar shoes would be thirty bucks or more if they were made in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But that's one reason why Donald Trump has, is implementing his tax plan, because right now with the taxes being so high on a lot of these companies, a lot of uh, them choose to go overseas so that they can uh, um, save money, especially with all of these high taxes. And then you have the Democrat Bernie and Hillary talking about raising taxes even higher, which is going to do nothing but send more jobs. So the taxes are causing the shoes to be more. It's not the no, price. I, I, what I'm, what I'm like, they, they pay them like $2 an hour or $5 a day or something to make those shoes. It's it's like... The taxes are so high. Corporate taxes are so high. People are moving mm -hmm. the corporations out of our country. Right. We want right. companies to stay here in the United States. Exactly. Make cool. your goods here. Right. And we mm -hmm. want people to thrive here in the You know, I, it has slipped my mind. What What are the corporate taxes in the United States? What percentage is it? I don't know what the corporate taxes is, but I know yeah. they are extremely high. But they're too high. And up. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. and up. But Donald Trump yeah. want to do a 15% tax all the way across the board. And right. the deal is with doing that, it will, jobs will be here. And if it costs more to make the product, then you'll be able to pay the person more so that they can take mm -hmm. care of their families. And then when those products is made, they'll have money to buy those products. But if you don't have any jobs here in the United States and those jobs are going overseas, when those people bring their products back here to the United States, how are we going to be able to buy their products if we don't right. have money and our pockets to be able to buy them. All right. So, so diamondandsilk.com, and you guys were saying that maybe Rubio once lived the gay lifestyle. We'll have to, we'll have to Google no, that. Got, now, well, I got to ask you another. I got to ask you another question. What about all these? What about all these goddamn white people at the Oscars that screwed all the black people out of their awards, and then Chris Rock shoved it right up? All these white people's asses. Were you guys excited by that? Well, look, Chris Rock was just doing his thing. We did not yeah. boycott the Oscars. No. Really? Listen. I did. I did. Well, it's time for everyone to come to the Because table. I'm not nominated. I wasn't nominated. Spike Lee never put me in a movie. That's racism. Oh, oh. Well, I can't Yeah. I'm going in the other direction, ladies. <laughs> Racism. Get, I want, I, my, hashtag, I want my white ass in a black movie, Jay Thomas. I love it. That's what I want. We'll get Jay Thomas in the Diamond and Silk movie. Yeah. Okay, that's, okay, that's, that's all good. That's all good. That's all good. So really, right. it's time to unite. You know what I want to do? I want to play the white drug dealer in the really nice black neighborhood. That's the kind of movie I want. Where I'm like the bad guy, the really bad guy is the white guy. That's like, why do you want drugs? Yeah, we don't want drugs in the hood. No, no, you're, it's not the hood. It shows that these nice black neighborhoods are just like American white neighborhoods, except who's the evil one? The white drug dealer. That would be me. That's the movie I want to make. Okay. The birds are tweeting. Everybody's having a good time. You know, uh, all the men look like Denzel Washington. You know, every one of the men coming out, everybody is well-dressed. They're going to a fabulous job. The kids are fantastic. And then down the street, the one that's ruining the neighborhood is the white guy. Right across from the really good oh, school. Right the the oh, yeah, right across from the really good school, the white guy's trying to sell drugs. Oh, listen, I'm going to tell you, write that script up and send it to Spike Lee and see what y'all can do. I will. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's going to be called? White Like Me. Oh, Lord. All right. Right.
<laughs> hey, Diamond and Silk, have you had yeah. any, uh, like, has anybody, I mean, I'm sure they went crazy on you, but has anybody threatened you or called you and, and asked you to retract what you said? About what? You know, I say a lot of things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the more people try to hate, the more we educate. That's right. Because we right. tell people to Google people, mm -hmm. and everything that I said, I said allegedly because I don't know if it's true. I'm just going sure. on what Google said. Mm -hmm. Because people right. said Google Donald Trump, so I said, okay, we'll do one best. We will Google uh -huh. him. Yeah. And Google. Now, can I ask you, I don't know anything about you. Are you two uh, uh, gay lovers? Most definitely not. We are blood sisters. We are. Oh, your blood. sisters. I got you. Okay. We are biological sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if I played the white drug dealer, I would try and get y'all to do things to each other once I got you on my drugs. Oh, see, that's why. See, that's exactly why we're not gonna be in a movie like this. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. You know what the name? Is? Wait a minute. I got a better name. What? You ready for this? What? White. Powder. That's the name of a movie. White powder. You know you it's white it's powder. cocaine, which is bad, or heroin, and it's uh, white, you know which is bad. Powder on a donut, a, a donut by yourself. That's right. You have <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's right. All right, Diamond and Silk. Wow. Thank you very much. And uh, you know, it must be exciting for you. It's really crazy. Uh, I'm on some level. I'd love to see uh, um, uh, Donald Trump run against Hillary. That would be so nutty. I don't know if it's any good for the country or not. Suppose he goes berserk and presses that red button and starts a big war. You're not Listen, afraid of that? Donald Trump has common sense. Okay? Yeah, uh -huh. that's why we love okay. him. There's no way he could have built a ten billion dollars without common sense. He's going That's to be right. in this country. And go to diamondandsilk.com to see exactly why we stuff for Trump and why you should stuff for Trump, too. Yes. All right. There you go. Uh, Diamond and Silk, you always have some place to, to talk on the Jay Thomas Show. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having us. Wow. Thank you. I love those gals, Christina. I love those, too. Right there. And, they don't, you know, it's that, you know, um, it's that Charles Barkley thing. It's they say stuff and... You know, people lose their jobs or they're never going to be on this uh, television show again or Donald Trump would have to fire them and all. He changed all of that. And I, I meant what I said. There have been, there's been a lot of uh, vitriol. Uh, and, and yes, the gridlock is caused because the, the, the houses of Congress are run by Republicans because they wanted gridlock. So they got what they wanted is a, is a guy that just fed into their anger and did all this you see all of this uh, jesus stuff all this you know you know uh, uh you know i don't know what that de what that thing is you can't be saying you're gonna carpet bomb people you can't be saying you're gonna throw immigrant immigrants out and then do the evangelical thing it doesn't work it doesn't fit at all it's like yesterday i saw a korean guy in koreatown with a with a cross that had a picture of of Jesus and it may have been the whitest picture of Jesus I've ever seen. This Korean guy had a picture of the whitest Wait, Jesus. Wait, you think that Jesus was photoshopped? No, what I mean, he drew it. Oh, he oh, had oh. He, like a little stick figure. Oh, okay. and he's a Korean guy, yeah. and I'm at a stoplight. So I roll my window down and I said to the guy, I go, he was like a minister or something, and and there's a lot of Christian. I go. He never even heard of people like you. I go, look at the guy you drew. He, ha he has no interest in people. Get yourself your own God. Get your own God. Like we gotta, that. We got to stop you from doing this. Someday, someday and you know what's funny? All the people at the off. bus stop started looking at the picture and looking at the Korean guy. And then he turned the cross around and he looked at it. I go, any of you think that that white guy... Is is the savior of this Korean guy? Well, they were dying laughing. Thank God that the the, the uh, light turned. You can't do that. You see, you can't do it. now. If he's not doing all that, you yell whatever you want to yell at him. Say anything. So Donald Trump comes out and he just says all the shit that they say needed setting saying, but they don't say it. So that's what it is. It's it's the talk show host and and yeah. Limbaugh and Hannity and all of them. It seems They've been like saying nobody do has it. a problem with the fact that he contradicts himself and things that he's no. said in the past. And it, it's like we we watch it like we watch reality TV. We're just so enthralled by it, it doesn't matter. Like no, he has I don't absolutely think even taking it seriously. But it is serious. I don't know. I don't know how it's gotten this far. Seriously, 
this guy is really knocking on the door to the nomination because I know, but people Rubio still are like, it's Cruz, never going to happen. It it is, with happen. them, it is. They're weaklings. They yeah. look weak. I mean, Rubio does look like a little fruity, you know, chubby guy. And and then a Cruz looks like Cruella DeVille. Mm. I mean, he just, you know. And then you have, you know, <laughs> Grandma Gabby over there running for, you know, the Democrats. You know, I mean, Hillary Clinton... She just looks like, you know, your grandma. I mean, you know, like, like Kim the not- yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's, so for me personally, yeah, to see Donald Trump, I heard a guy last night and this was kind of weird. He was, he was kind of saying, maybe he wasn't kind of saying that Donald Trump had now had start to be careful about being assassinated. Hmm. That, that this kind of, you know, um, He's a demagogue, is what they call it. You right. know, you know, blustery and yeah, well, I can change everything. He's saying, and, and it can come from anywhere. That's the we don't even know That's who right. wants to it kill could, him. It could be everybody because well, he hates. Well, everybody. this group was saying that you know Hillary Clinton has killed before, so it was a right wing oh. you know uh, talk show. But I'm listening to it going, yeah, uh, there could be somebody from within the Republican Party. There could be uh, 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 an illegal immigrant. Uh, there could could be a Muslim. There could be a liberal. Absolutely. I, I don't know what he's got surrounding him, but, and, it, and it's also because he's now so visible that the nuts start to come out and, you know, they, they start hearing the dogs talk to him and stuff. I love nuts in the street talking to themselves and, mm-hmm. and too. writing these long drawn out. Oh, I love it so much. Yesterday, I, I don't know what they are. Poems or something. Maybe. Yeah yesterday or something i saw a guy talking to himself and drinking soup out of a pro- or i don't know what it was inside of it but whatever out of a progresso soup can on the mm. corner and having a real detailed conversation with himself it was amazing now they think someone's sitting in front of them you know, <laughs> know. right in front of them I know. by the way they passed in new york you can uh piss um you know this you can urinate um you can take more than one seat on the subway um it's every rude thing people do. They're no longer going to arrest you for it in New York. If yeah. you like, you want to sit down and take two seats and spread your legs Nobody's out. Nobody's getting and... arrested for that anyway. Oh, That's they not... weren't? No. What about pissing in public? Well, yeah, that, that you can get a fine. Yeah. So everybody could anymore. just start pissing all over the sidewalk? That's, That's you got to check be. it out. That is true. Me, me too? Yeah, hell yeah. You can go topless. Yeah. And you can piss right on. Finally, uh, because I don't like to pay for stuff. You could put to your the bathroom. It's not fair. You could put your pee hole over a grate in the street. Yeah, I can. And just manhole. <laughs> yeah, pee inside of that, and you should yell that while you're doing it. Take that manhole. Not a manhole anymore, is it? Let me put my girl hole my over this hole. manhole. <laughs> manhole, meet my woman hole. Uh, let's go to Brian of Georgia. Yes, Brian, it's Jay Thomas. Did you hear the way that I crafted that interview so that I painted them into a corner they couldn't get out of? Huh? Let me put my girl on. All right, get rid of him. I don't want to hear the show back this early. Uh, let's go to Sergio, who's in West Virginia. Hey, Sergio, it's Jay Thomas. Hello? Yeah, Jay Thomas here. Hey, yeah, it's me, Sergio. Uh, I saw your thing and I was calling in on the stuff that you sure. were talking about, all about Donald Trump. Y- yes, you saw my thing and you wanted to call in. Sure, go ahead. How's my thing look? Yeah. All right, this is the thing about it, okay? Yeah. Like, Benjamin Franklin was right when he said common sense is an uncommon, uh, you know, virtue or whatever. Because right. I don't believe our people are taking this bullshit and they're taking it in and swallowing it and taking it at face value. It's ridiculous. You know, yeah, but isn't it fun? Is. Wait a second. Isn't it fun? It's not fun because the, really? this dude is messing with our, our livelihood, our, the future of our of our America. Like, that's messed ah, up. You're, you're not, you know what? You're not going to live that long. What difference does it make? He's not going to really hurt you that much. It'd be, it's going to be a yeah, lot of fun. It won't hurt me. It won't hurt my well, kids because the well, shit he's going to do is going to affect us for the next 20 to 30 years. Really? Okay. Yeah. Well, I gotta tell you, everybody's wondering what he's gonna do. It's kind of making me, 
you know, I, I, I hate to say this, it makes me kind of want him to win just to see how how weird it would be. That's what I keep saying. Like, Everybody says that. We can't says afford that. that. Wants it we can't, can't afford it. Part of me right. wants right. a vet, job, you know, as how a veteran, easy. I've been to Afghanistan. I see how yeah. us being there. No, wait, he wants to stop all time. of that. Wait a second. He wants he to stop it. He ain't going to stop it. He ain't going to no. stop it. He just said it at, 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 the, at the first uh, uh, Republican, um, uh, whatchamacallit, when they was having a, a debate. He was talking about right. sending more troops, sending more, doing this and doing that, and going to, oh, oh, after these people and all that stuff. He ain't going to stop yeah. shit. He's going to play... He's going to play toy, toy soldiers, and the only people that are going to fucking benefit it, from it is these people in the life in, in Washington, D.C., with these suits mm -hmm. on. Those, those are the only people that are going to benefit. And you know Boy, they wear from? those guys. By the, why do they always have to have a fucking suit on? Wouldn't That's it be fun saying. to see Congress have, like, Hawaiian shirts or wife beaters? Wouldn't you like to see that yeah. sometimes? Yeah, Fridays. Yeah, casual time. Friday at Congress. Sure. No, the last time one of them had a hoodie on and started mm -hmm. talking about Trayvon and all that stuff, they can't. They end up like China Solison. They they Solison. put on a. <laughs> did did they do that? Did, I guess they all put uh, hoodies on and talk like uh, see, Trayvon thing, up to the heart. This is the thing. Yeah. This is the thing about Trump. This is the thing that scares yeah. me so much. All right. Yeah. Any fucking debate you go to, right? You have something to say about the about about the politician that's running. They take it at face value. It's like they want you to fucking oppose them so they can prove you wrong. But with him, he's like a fucking bully. As soon as you start saying some shit you don't like, he sends his little goons to come and get you. How fucking unprofessional is that? Like, are you fucking He's got little like goons that come and get you. Wow. Well, Sergio, I uh, hope you're working for uh, for Hillary Clinton. Or who, who are you working for, Hillary or another Republican? Listen, I, I want, in a way, I want Hillary to win, but she's done so much shit that it's not looking good. But I don't really right. give a damn who wins. I just don't want this motherfucker to win. I want somebody uh. in there who's going to have my fucking, my fucking rights, taking my rights, take everybody's rights. It doesn't matter whether you're fucking purple, green, black, white, indigo, whatever, whatever you believe yeah. in. God, I hope that, we don't have all those that. other colors. We're having enough trouble with the colors we have now. I don't know. But Wouldn't it be America, awful if all of a sudden, Christina, we got to worry about the purple people and the green people? I don't know if we yeah. can handle it. No, we couldn't. Coconut colored people. We can't have we, you're the ones that are, you know. Well, look, Sergio, you're so passionate. You're so passionate. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, let's go to Mike, who's in New Jersey. Uh, yes, Mike, it's Jay Thomas. Go ahead. Mike? Yep. Yeah. Hi. It's Jay Thomas. Hi. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Jay, just so you know, when you're on hold, you can hear everybody but you. Just so you know. Hold on. I know, but I want to What did you, that. well, wait a second. What did you hear that was so interesting? No, 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 I'm saying I, can, I can't hear you. I can hear the call. All right, I, I changed the set. Okay, thank you. I Don't the worry. Set. So what? I don't know. I'm telling you, buddy. That's well, all I hear. I'm going to call I was, I was calling in to let you know that. But when we put you on the air and I said, Mike, I wasn't on hold anymore. All right? No, I know. I heard you then, but you don't hear it. Never mind. didn't answer. All, all right, right, shut up. You got my head spinning. I was calling to let you know that New Balance speakers are made in America. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. I don't want to hear any facts. I don't want to hear any facts. They probably make the shoelaces in the United States. They send the rest of it overseas to be made by somebody. These little tiny kids that they just, they beat. Make those shoes. Tiny fingers. Little tiny kids making those shoes. Then here's the other one. As soon as we take all the jobs away and we bring them back to the United States, all of those children will starve to death. That's what people are saying. Mm. So, sure. you know, yeah, you can't do it. You can't. It's like that, you know, Robin Hood would rob from the rich and give to the poor. Mm -hmm. Told you this before. So he would ride through the forest and he would see a really, really rich guy. And the rich guy would go, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's Robin Hood. And Robin Hood would go, you're rich. Give me everything. Give me everything, you're rich, and I'll give it to the poor. Oh, don't kill me. And he would give Robin Hood his jewels and everything. And Robin Hood had all of the rich guy stuff. Now I'm going to take this and give it to the poor. And the rich guy would say, oh, Robin Hood, I'm poor. I'm poor. I have nothing now. Wow. And Robin Hood would have to give him. 
all of his stuff back. And then the the poor guy would say, I'm rich again. I'm rich. And then Robin Hood would have to re-rob him, Christina. Sounds exhausting. It would go on for days until he gave him a little bit of money and made him middle class. So he'd ride away. Man, you hear some interesting historical facts here. All right. It's a Jay Thomas show. I see you really want to talk. You're lonely, aren't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll do that in a couple of minutes. On Sirius XM, which is pretty fantastic. Yes, it is. MLB Network Radio is getting you ready for opening day with a tour of spring training here on site broadcasts with all 30 teams. Down with the ace of the Mets, Matt Harvey. Justin Pedroia. Standing with Mike Trout. The latest news from every camp and expert analysis of your favorite team. Man, baseball's back. Today at 5 p.m. Eastern, Cliff Floyd and Casey Stern visit the Brewers in Phoenix. The Brewers in Phoenix. MLB Network Radio tours, spring training, Sirius 209, XM 89, and the Sirius XM app. Be honest. Will owning a bigger TV help you get ahead in life? Will another pair of shoes make you a better person? Probably not. But what if you could speak another language? If acquiring a new language excites you more than acquiring more stuff, then wait until you hear this. As part of its biggest language learning event in history, Rosetta Stone is giving away demos of its powerful language learning software absolutely free. For your free demo, call 1-800-921-5663. And Rosetta Stone has made language learning more convenient than ever. Learn on your computer or iPad, then practice on the go with your smartphone or MP3 player without ever opening a book or memorizing boring vocabulary again. Do you want more stuff or do you want a language that will last a lifetime? After all, it's all about priorities. To try a free demo of this powerful language learning software, call 1-800-921-5663. Again, get your free demo now. 1-800-921-5663. That's 1-800-921-5663. I started drinking when I was 13, and alcohol eventually led to cocaine, ecstasy, and meth. The result was multiple brushes with the law, a fed-up family, and bleeding ulcers so bad that I couldn't eat or sleep. I was a bright kid with a lot of potential, but drug addiction had taken away everything that I valued. Finally, my loving grandmother had enough and gave me an ultimatum. Go to rehab or get out. And thank God she did. My life is so much better now. I'm a recovery advocate for the iRecovery Helpline, and I get to help people who are sick like I was. Alcohol and drug abuse destroys families, but there is a solution. I've seen firsthand how well iRecover works. And if you call now, we will pay for your flight to the newest iRecover treatment center in Palm Springs, California. My name is Thomas, and you can speak with me at 877-415-6764. That's 877-415-6764. Call 877-415-6764 or visit iRecoverHelpline.com. That's iRecoverHelpline.com. Sirius XM begrudgingly presents. I'm making that up so I feel like a bigger shot than I am. Uh, March 3rd, I'm going to be in Red Bank, New Jersey at the Count Basie Theater. March 4th at Huntington is sold out, so you're shit out of luck. Uh, Montclair, New Jersey is March 5th, and we will be showing the UFC fight for that night. And uh, you can stick around and watch that. And then March 10, 11, 12, I'll be in Indianapolis, Cleveland, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go to JimNorton.com for tickets. And there's all kinds of ticket giveaways with Sirius and uh, the tour's been going great. I'm boring myself. Comedy greats on Sirius XM. Did you know there's a species of fish called the slippery dick? Wow. Welcome back to the Jay Thomas Show on Sirius XM. Never understood what that bumper meant. Diamonds are forever. On a few minutes, we'll have Ben Jameson. Uh, ben Jameson says it's time for you to play beer pong with your two year old. So we'll have Ben Jameson that the kids should be taught this bar game. <laughs> and the child yeah, should learn. Prep class. Well, he, he'll re, he has like 16 years of learning responsible drinking before he gets to uh, the bar where you get really. Uh, I, I've seen the beer pong games go where eventually, you know, somebody you know pukes all over the you know the bean bag. Right. Uh, let's go to William, who is in North Carolina. Hey, William, it's Jay Thomas. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I was just wondering, watching on the news, um, that yeah. this Republican senator and this Republican congressman, they're not mm-hmm. going to back Trump. Um, right. Last time I checked, anything to do with politics, you work for the people. That's, right. That's what you're put in the office for, is to work mm-hmm. for the people. So the people are telling you that they want Trump in there, but yet you're not going to do what the people that hired you to do to pursue it. Um, right. Why are they not stepping well, down? Well, because if you were elected, if you, no, if you were elected, you are elected. Let's say you're elected by 50,000 people. William, Correct. congratulations, you're elected. So you are the representative of those people. Correct. And you are supposed to... Um, work toward what's good and, and what you know of your constituents and what they want. So these people are saying that when they go and talk to their people that voted for them, they're saying they don't want Donald Trump. I mean, that would be their answer to you. Then how is he getting 40, up to 50% of the vote in those states? Right. Or beating the other contender in that state? Um, as far as I knew, it's always in America, majority rules, but obviously it's, if the lobbyist and everybody doesn't work where it's to your advantage, ah, we just throw that guy out and put our own guy in there. Well, wait um, a minute. Remember, remember the other day, I don't know why Trump did this, when they asked him how he felt about David Duke, who was the grand dragon of the KKK in Louisiana, and David Duke ran for governor of Louisiana. And he got the Republican nomination, and he's a KKK guy. He ran against a governor named Edwin Edwards, who was going to jail, or his brother had already gone to jail. He eventually went to jail. And the bumper stickers in Louisiana, this is no bullshit. They said, vote for the crook, not the Klansman. It's important. I'm not kidding. So in Louisiana, we elected a criminal a guy that was put away, Edwin Edwards, Google it, and went away for malfeasance in office over the chosen candidate of the Republicans. I don't even know that the Democrats wanted Edward Edwards. So we had two people running that each, and, and so even Republicans turned against the KKK guy. You would back a KKK guy if he got the nomination? Um. No, I, I me personally. You took too long to answer that, that was fucking really question. Really long uh, pause. I, hold it a second. I want you to ask me this question, William. Jay, if you met like a thirty-year-old girl and she wanted to suck an old man, um, would you go off with her? Would you ask me that question, please, William? Would I go off with her? No, ta- ask me that question. Say, Jay, if you met a thirty-year-old woman and she wanted to suck you off. Would you go off with her? Go ahead. Well, you ask me that question. You met a 30 year old woman and she wanted to suck you off. Would you go off with her? No. Okay, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> you hear how long it took me to answer, William? But that was it. But that's your choice. And I, I'm no, it isn't. I didn't want to say publicly that, that of course I would let her suck me off. Of course I would if I could if I could go behind a dumpster or something. I said you would you back the KKK guy? You paused, like, oh, you mean the people against Jews and Catholics and black people and any ethnic th- and a burned do you, cross? Do you honestly think that Donald Trump is against black people and Jewish? People? No, I'm asking you. Would you vote for a KKK guy if the if the, all the people voted for him and you were a rep, in the Republican Party? If he was party, with you, the, if he was with the KKK, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's they think that's Donald the Trump. KKK. They think Donald Trump is bad as bad for the country as the KKK. But those that's those not their choice. That's not. All right, we're going around in circles. We're going around in circles. They think he's terrible. The Republicans are scared of him. The, the Democrats don't think he's going to win. The Republican politicians. Yes, they are. And a lot of other people, too. I think it's hysterical. I don't know what it would be like to have him as president. And then why doesn't he have Caitlyn Jenner as his first lady, Christina? 
<laughs> I saw Caitlin last night. You can't imagine this, William. No matter how you live, no matter how long. I literally went to dinner last night at a place where you, where you go to see and be seen in L.A. called Craig's. And every time I'm there, I see somebody or people see me or whatever, and it's stupidly priced. But I go there. So I went last night with a buddy of mine, Tim Matheson, and we sat down, and he says, I've never been here before. I said, just wait. Just wait. And so a couple of recognizable people came in, and before the night was over, Caitlyn Jenner stood like a leg length away from me and sat down in the next booth and looked right at Tim and I. And Tim said, I know, um, you know, Bruce. And I said, yeah, I do, too. He says he didn't even acknowledge us. It's because there's so much focus on him when he walks into a room that, I mean, everybody, it was almost like they went, huh, I mean it, everybody. And by the All way, right. Christina, he had a lovely, lovely uh, tight, what do you call it? A tight skirt? It was like a business. It was, it was like really a pencil a skirt? Yeah, yeah, a linen pencil skirt with a well, beautiful blouse. We're going blouse. in North Carolina right now where yeah. they're using a unisex bathroom, I guess, because if you feel that you're a woman, you ought to be yeah. able to use the women's room. You ever, Do you ever go in there and sit down to pee and it just kind of feel like a girl for a while? No. no. And the thing really? is, about Caitlyn Jenner, yeah. Been wanting to feel like a woman for all these years. There's yeah. a lot of people that don't have the money to go and get changed into a woman because that's right. what supposedly they've been their whole life. Well, let me tell you the best way. For people that don't have money, William, this is, William, you get some rubber bands. And you take them and you wrap them around your penis and you take the rubber bands and get them around your waist and get the penis going back toward your butt crack. And then... You get a Dixie cup and you put that around and you, and you open that Dixie cup up and you put some Vaseline and stuff in there. And that's how, that's an inexpensive way to, to have a sex change operation. So when you take all your clothes off, cause you're dressed as a woman, uh, but the you guy. I think that a lot he, of this could hmm? around. Britain Wait a minute. A lot, he, a lot of people would put their penis in the Dixie cup with the Vaseline and, and that would be like the, you know, like a vagina. Where's the pee go, Jay? Oh, you gotta you gotta break it all down. You gotta flap your penis down and go to the pee. <laughs> I think it's I'm talking about having sex. I think that's yeah. all it is publicity. It is all publicity. All right, if you want to be a woman, you could be a woman. All right, thank you very much, William. Thank you. Let's go to Vernon, who is in Georgia. Boy, the people in in the South love Donald Trump. Absolutely love him. Uh, yes, go ahead, Vernon. Hey, how you doing, bud? I'm good, pal. Hey, I am too. I'm just sitting out here in, in golf country. <laughs> what are you now? What exactly are you doing? Well, I'm sitting out here. I've uh, got a fish pond on my right and a fish pond on my left. And uh, no, you I'm don't. Not, no, yes, you I, don't. Yes, yes, I do, buddy. Yes, I are do. Are you using like just a little spinning reel or a cane pole? Because it's probably no, just filled with bass and no, stuff. No, right? no, we got we got both. Uh, we use uh, uh, spinning reels, cane poles, whatever like that. Just any time, you know. Uh, but anyway, mm -hmm. I've been listening to you to you. Oh, wait a second. Right. I got to find out more. Are you fishing from the bank or are you you're not yeah, in the boat from, right now? From, from the bank. I mean, we're and do you have one of those fish feeders at the end so the thing is just filled with bass? No, and, no, huh? no, sir, we don't, no, no, really? we don't do that. We don't do okay. that because uh, I think that right there is wrong. Uh, you know, to fight your fish and you just, just net them. That's about like, uh, you know, our government. They, they, they say they'll suck us in and just, you know, suck us out, you know? <laughs> you know, that's a good that. one. If, if ever you had to give a speech, you would well, say, it's like when people yeah, feed exactly. the fish pond. That's what the goddamn government's like, like that. Yeah. It, it, exactly, exactly, exactly. But sure. what I'm saying is, I just wanted to holler at you, man, because uh, I've been listening to your uh, some of your comments, stuff, and you other sure. calling in, and yeah. I, I really, I really love the uh, the two black girls, uh, women. Yeah, uh, about, yeah, yeah. I, I like their ideas on stuff because uh, yeah. Well, but what I get, from what I gather, is. They were socially, you know, raised, uh, you know, in a, in a, a system that, uh, you know, was really what not they were wanted to have. You understand? 
Yes. Yeah, they, they, they want to be, you know, they want their own jobs. But, they but don't you think a lot of our ancestors did that? Exactly. I mean, not, exactly. I mean, I'm older than you are, so it would have to be your mom and dad's generation and certainly my generation. Uh, oh, I, and I, my kids aren't like that. And you don't sound like you're like that, but no, that's sir. a long time to wait, you know? No, sir. You're right. You're exactly right. I'm, I'm in my middle sixties. I'm a Vietnam War era veteran and all that. Wait a minute. Uh, how, I thought you were a younger guy. Hold on a minute. How did you in your middle sixties, how come you're not like a redneck, black hating, KKK, Confederate flag person? Because, simple fact of the matter is, I was raised around blacks. We all had to do the same thing. I was, I was, I, matter of fact, I was considered poor white trash growing up. Oh, okay. okay. All right. So, we went out. Did you, time. did you smoke, uh, marijuana when you were in Vietnam? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure did. Do yeah. You, well, do you still uh, smoke? I bet you can. Can you grow no, some great marijuana there? No, um, but I but I can and I have, but I don't do it no more because of my medical conditions. I got to go to the pain doctor. Yeah. So, wait but, a second. Uh, there's oh, nothing better, God. Christina. Please tell him. Tell oh, him. Oh, Vernon, there's nothing better than managing your pain with a little bit of mar uh, medical marijuana. Oh. Well, I know that, but see, I'm down in South Georgia, and I would be locked up in jail if I try to do that. You know. Oh. Uh, okay. well, oh see, uh, okay. look here. I live in one of the richest, poorest counties in the state of Georgia. One of the richest, poorest counties. What does that mean? It's, well, it means that uh, this county, uh, three, two thirds of this county is owned by plantations. Uh, we're talking about corporations like Milo, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Coca Cola, and all that. And then there's not much left of this county for people to live. All right. wow. And most of your plantations have got the blacks living on the plantations, so they both. So you still, them. right in your neighborhood, you have plantations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good Lord of mercy, yeah. Do you have a guy like that 12 years a slave coming out there no, and beating everybody no, in the no. yard? Oh, you don't no, have that? No, 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 not here. <laughs> hey, you know why, Christina? <laughs> <laughs> wow! About, about hey, is, I was really uh, nervous. They, so. they they import uh, people from yeah. uh, Nova Scotia, New York, Canada, places like that. They sure. don't import it. No, they don't import. Them. They they come down here and pay big money to shoot our quail, shoot our deer, shoot our ducks, right. shoot our ducks. You know yeah. what, Vernon? I could talk to you all day, but I got to go. We got other folks. It's a democracy. Hey, well, 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 look here. I'm gonna tell you something. What? Uh, right. Take my number down. You can call me anytime on your private phone or whatever, and we'll talk. And sure, Christina, take that, that number, would you? And I'm going to give you my private hey, number. I'll hey, call you from here. my hey, cell, and then you'll have my number. Listen, okay. Listen. It might be a good thing. By the way, where, what's the wife's name? Let's get together. Let let let's the my wife and your wife get together next time. We'll meet in well, Panama City. Well, you ever go to well, Panama I, City? I, I know where Panama City is. I went there back when I was up, but a two lane road. Well, you need to go back again. It's pretty. It got well, the big highway here. and everything. I, yeah, I know. It. I've been down there not two years ago, but I'm in the middle of the divorce right now, so we'll leave the wife oh, out of it. But, you know uh, what? Why don't we go on a couples weekend? Be you and and just before you and your wife break up. Hey, and, and I tell you what, favorite. I'll pretend. I'll tell my wife we're going to pretend that we're going to be breaking up, and then Vernon, what's your what's your soon to be ex wife's name? Uh, Kathy. With so Vernon and Kathy are in some trouble, honey. And, no, we're not. And, and no, we'll, no, we're not in trouble. Look here, I don't give her everything I give her. She wants a little more. It's no big deal. I mean, she could have a little more, but I gotta have. Oh, a so little you're little ready little. to get rid of her? You you can't wait for it to be over then. Well, yeah, really, truly, that's the same. Yeah, that's about it. That's about it. And, and is she a lot younger than you, Vernon? Have you married yeah, a younger she, woman? She, she's uh, she's like uh, eight, ten years younger than me. Well, that's not that much younger. No, no. Well, no, no, but still. What hey, are you going to do for, wait, 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 what are you going to do for women now? Because you sound vital. Well, think about it is, I, I, I know what Skinner is, I know what Viagra is, so, uh, but I got a lot of women mm. want me. I got you. Yeah. Well, send, you know what? Send Christina a dick pic also, would you please? Oh. I got, I got, I got, I got I, so my, my nephew's, uh, my nephew's wife named Christina, so I can remember that. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thanks. Hey, but look here, Jay. Wait a minute. Don't, don't send that. Don't, I just send a picture of yourself with your shirt off holding a, holding a, holding a trout. 
Yeah. But Jay, I do like I, I do like your different views on political. Well, thank you, Vernon. Like what a pleasure! Yeah. What a pleasure! I'll I'll see you probably in either if not uh, Panama City, we'll go to Destin. Okay. Well, hell, come, hell, you can come to my place and I, I I'll show you. Hell yeah! Place. I'll bring the whole gang down there. Yeah, All right. Hell yeah, we get the videos and we catch catfish and brim and stuff like that. We have a good old time. Black you get black those black. videos ready. I'm on my way. Heat up the VC VC. Uh, what is it? The VHS, bitch. Heat it up, bitch. All right. I'll see you later. We'll be right back. Wow, I can't talk anymore. Hey, Jay. Jay, do you what? ride a horse? Yes, I do. Okay, good deal. I got eight of them. Get out of here. I'm bringing I'm seven there. friends. Well, yeah. bring them on. I got horses. I got. I like when, when the horses are on a trail and, and yeah. you're, you're riding along and, and the tail comes up and that green shit comes flying out of them. Well, I've seen that. I've seen that from the back end and the front end. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice talking to you, buddy. It was great talking to you, Vernon nice to Georgia. Talking. We will be right back. No, 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 we got to go. All you right. Have to go. Oh, I thought you said break. No, I said don't break until you hear me. Oh, Okay. You know, I have I have such a good thing with uh, Steve. This yeah, is no, really I too know. bad. I know. Tell me about it. I wanted it to be much more. Well, you know, you're good at it, but then no, you, you know forget. What the thing is, is I don't do it enough, so I don't have you know that mm -hmm. quickness about me. Yeah, that's what it is. But I do other things. That's like sex when you've been married a long time. You lose that quickness. Yeah. You lose that ability to spin around real fast. Mm -hmm. You know. I understand. I've been there. Because that's what's needed. Uh, here it is. What? You will not get arrested for public drinking or urinating in Manhattan anymore. That's the announcement. This is going to make the city smell like absolute shit. Well, and what a dumb announcement. You know, like, um, why announce it? We should test this out. No, I mean, but but you're right. Why say it? Why even just, you know, let people continue at least to sneak around. Now, if you want to just stop and and take a leak by a tree, you can. So, but what about um, what's indecent exposure? Does that not exist anymore? Because I'm going to you know, see if you're in, stuff when you if you're in up. Georgia or you're in a lot of states and and a. Uh, maybe a kid or a woman or whatever, somebody's offended, and let's say you're, you know, hiding behind your car or something, you take a leak, mm -hmm. That that's indecent exposure. You're exactly no, I, correct. I know, I know. I'm wondering if it has to be seen by somebody. Oh, it's just going to be dick everywhere. Yeah, the, the, but wh why, in, you know, it's like, don't announce it and let them think it's still against the law. Uh, let's go to Tom, who's in Connecticut. Ah, uh, yes, Tom, it's Jay Thomas. Go ahead. Hey, Jay, hey, on that story with the cops, uh, it's at their discretion. They don't have to arrest you anymore, but they still can. If, like they've, if they've had a marijuana. fight with their wife or something, they'll arrest you? Yeah, if they're in a bad mood. It's kind of how yeah. it is with, with weed, too. It's all how they, or, or speeding. I mean, it's really, Re everything is about Remember me and my two friends? I do. We had the one hitter, mm -hmm. and they they didn't handcuff us, but they they held our thumbs behind our backs, which was really odd. And yeah, and they they frisked us and all this stupid shit, and then took the pot, the assholes. Yeah. yeah uh, yes, Tom. Ah, so uh, the... when you had dinner with Tim the other night, and you saw Caitlin. Did yeah. she happen to get up and go to the bathroom? And it's so no. Fun. She would have gone to the women's room in in Beverly Hills. At a bullshit fucking restaurant with every, with one, one group of people more bullshit than the next. Yeah. I would have gone to the women's room. What was weird about it is, is that, uh, she comes in and I mean, whether you're worth billions or you're just the waiter or the bartenders, the, you know, there were, maybe a kid was in there. The place stops. It just absolutely stopped. And took a breath. And I think that, um, it was, it's just odd. It's, and, and my friend Tim said, not too feminine looking, <laughs> you know, at 6'3 with heels on. So what's that? 6'5, Christina? Yeah, it could be. Well, that's Came in there be at 6. The site, right? That's gotta be good. Well, no, the dress like was that. really nice and his body is really, Thin. Everybody super wants thin. to dress her. I mean, they're throwing clothes at her. Yeah, but his his body is 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 thin. 
Was it's there like a lump um, in the front of the dress. No, no lumps. <laughs> Get rid of this idiot. <laughs> lumps. Get your kids. It's beer pong time. <laughs> This is Michael Breed, and on Sirius XM PGA Tour Radio, we're talking golf all day, every day. Improve your game by listening to some of the best instructors in the world, like Hank Haney, David Ledbetter, and yours truly. We talk about what's happening on tour with former players and legends of the game, like Masters champions Ben Crenshaw and Larry Mize. And we have live play-by-play coverage of your favorite PGA Tour event. If you love the game of golf, check out PGA Tour Radio, Sirius 208, XM92, and on your smartphone on the new and improved Sirius XM app. If you're thinking about a memory foam or dial up your number bed, don't buy one just yet. Not until you experience the customizable bed everyone is talking about, the Reverie Dream Sleep System. Reverie uses patented Dream Cell mattress technology with over 200 adjustment points for the most comfortable sleep of your life. Call 877-670-4500 to learn why Hollywood A-listers doctors are raving about their Reverie beds. It might be Reverie's zero gravity setting that relieves pressure on your back, or the anti-snore function, or Reverie's 101 night guarantee. If you haven't had the most amazing sleep of your life, return it for a full refund. Want to know why celebrities, athletes, and doctors are switching to Reverie Dream Sleep Systems? Call now to find out. 877-670-4500 or visit Reverie.com. That's 877-670-4500 or R-E-V-E-R-I-E dot com. You know your kids are smart, but did you know enrolling them in Kumon can make them even smarter? Like 12-year-old Pranav. I've taken 11 college courses, either physics, calculus, or chemistry. The Kumon method is designed to put your children ahead of their peers in math and reading. I like the challenges that I face in the Kumon program. To learn more, visit Kumon.com and join us for a free parent orientation. That is K-U-M-O-N.com. Kumon, where smart kids get smarter. Who has the will to make the world a better place? To tackle the big problems of our time and never give up? Who will push the boundaries of discovery, forge partnerships that lead to better answers? Who will work for the common good with uncommon will? Who will? Spartans will. Michigan State University. Search the term Spartans will today to see how Spartans are impacting lives across the globe. Every Monday and Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, The Bonfire on Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Here's a clip from Monday's Bonfire with Big J Okerson and Dan Soder. She starts fucking the guitar tech. Well, the guitar tech was tuning her up for the <laughs> guitar tech. Gets... <laughs> he's the on deck circle. Yeah, he's just like I banged her right. There you go, buddy. She's probably playing in a uh, A flat. But I, was, I gave her seventeen pumps. I know it's the exact widening you like to go in with. You might want to hit her with a drop D. Those strings are jammable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, check out the action on this clip. <laughs> The Bonfire with Big J. Okerson and Dan Soder. Encore at 6 p.m. West, 9 Eastern. On Comedy Central Radio, Sirius XM 95. Sirius XM Comedy Greats. Slaying the truth, whether it's real or not. There's no room for honesty on the Jay Thomas Show. And now, your truth seeker, Jay Thomas. Go to Jay Thomas Show at Gmail. Love to uh, hear your little, read your little comments. Uh, Christina's on all the social media. Uh, voice box 3476 Sirius is there. And coming up in a few minutes, news from over there, where I bring you something from, from overseas. You're probably already going, oh, this, he's so good at it. They're already chuckling, Christina. Can't wait for that feature. <laughs> I, I, I know. <laughs> ah, the big feature. My seat. I know that. Yeah, I know. Everybody's, a, you know. <laughs> uh, let's welcome Ben Jameson. Hey, Ben, it's Jay Thomas. Welcome to Sirius XM's 94 Comedy Grace. How are you? Hey, Jay. Thanks a lot for having me. So you're at buffalogames.com, and you make, um, is, is it mostly a bar, bar games or like, what sort of games? 
do you make? It's, uh, well, yeah, some of our recent ones are a little more party games, you know, kind of adult games, but it's really, uh, it's puzzles, games, really across all ages. Um, but okay. party games are kind of our specialty. Well, the thing that you, um, you know, that you're here for is it it says that um, somebody, you or someone announced that now you can play beer pong with your two year old. And right off the bat, I'm thinking you get, you know, you're throwing the bean bags into the cups or whatever. And then the, then the two year old's taking what shots of beer and you're playing with dad. Yeah, that's pr- probably uh, the head. Well, that's great. You know what? When that's good. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> it's a little. It's a little bit dramatic. I don't think it's it's quite. The, uh, it's a little too dramatic for you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so now the word beer pong is in there, but certainly the little kids aren't drinking beer, right? No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. It's it's really meant. Um, you know, obviously, it's it's kind of based off the party game that everybody played in in college at one point and. This is brought down to a small scale, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean it's it's an adult game. I mean, of course, you could you could fill it up with whatever you want, and uh, you know, kids kids could play it if they fill it up with juice. But it's it's really meant and kind of positioned, you know, for the adult market. And you know, it's, it got a lot of attention, obviously, at Toy Fair because everybody knows beer pong, and to see it kind of at a small scale, it's um, it's pretty cool, and it, it, it's a lot of fun to play. So you're selling the beer pong for people to play at home. Yeah, yeah. So it's really. Well, where uh, isn't beer pong really? Am I wrong about this? It's just like Dixie cups filled with beer on two ends of the table, set up like a bowling right, alley. Right, but it's usually very dirty. So I like exactly. the fact that Ben has something that is um, a little less meningitis free. I guess you can say. You mean the beer pong tables you get are dirty? This, you get this dirty piece of plywood, or you rip a door off of somebody's fraternity hinges right. and then you, you set up with these Dixie cups that eventually turn disgusting because the uh beer pong ball is you know in in on the floor and everywhere else and then eventually you get some sort of a disease from it so it's oh, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. that this is this is much hey, cleaner uh, ben, approach way way to way to have a a woman ruin a really fun game well, we've been I mean, playing for centuries ben knows for centuries we've been playing this game ben came up with a better idea this is a, Ben this is, has a little thing with a ball in it and a little catapult or something. Is that what you've? Is that what I'm looking at? That's that's exactly it. And it actually, I didn't even come up with it. Some great inventors out in Minnesota who loved big beer pong said, "Hey, how can we make this uh, exactly what Christina's saying? Like just a little more portable, cleaner, and it's a more sophisticated beer pong. You can play with little beer. little beer pong, is and what you can take this to tailgate and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about strapping a big door to the back of your car. Exactly. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, you are some fun to hang out with with the dirt and all of that. That's the. I played beer pong, drank everything on that table, licked the. Uh, it was what was it? Was it a? It's a. It's a ping pong ball, right? Yeah. That we put in there, right? I've licked that ping pong ball, done everything. Nothing's ever happened to me. Not yet. It's un- Men don't it's have that kind of. Men don't get meningitis from beer pong. Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Women are always afraid they're going to be catching something. No, I don't want to do it there. Something might, I might catch That's something. Because our, ins- our our stuff is all on the inside, so we're just trained that well, way. Well, we ought to be more frightened. A, a, a scorpion could bite us when we're going to the bathroom outside. <laughs> Jump up there and think we're some sort of a low hanging fruit. Let, let me get look, Ben, you don't want to hear all this. Uh, go to buffalogames.com. So, how big is this? Uh, uh, what are you, are you calling it junior pong, or what are you calling it? It is called uh, Mini Pong, so it'll Mini be available pong. all over the place uh, this fall. A lot of big stores are taking it. And and how, how big is the game? Um, like the board I'm looking at is, what, three feet long or something like that? Yeah, not even. It's about a, it's about a little over two feet long. And, uh, yeah, the cups are kind of, you know, shot glass style cups, if you will, so they're pretty small. Okay. So you could put, grown-ups could put booze in there, couldn't they? Real booze. You can, as we say, fill it with a liquid of your choice. Now, when you were in college, were you good at beer pong? I was, uh, well, I think everybody thinks they're good at beer pong in college, but I, I don't think I was the best. No, I was, uh, I'm much better at mini beer pong. I was my, wife, my wife was great at, uh, at beer pong in college, my future wife. You mean to tell me you'd go into a bar and your girlfriend would be popping the ball into the beer things and she was like a beer pong champion? 
Well, she wasn't a champion, but it was, uh, you know. Isn't part of beer pong Jay. also being able to drink the beer? Jay, yeah, you, what? that's part of it. Um, I was able, when I, when I was in college, I found a spot on the <clears> wall <throat> where I was able to bounce, you know, just for a trick, to bounce the ball off the wall and into the cup. There you go. That was your shot. Yeah, wow. my trick shot. Well, you you and Ben's wife are real <laughs> catchers, aren't you? Yeah, That's yeah. Get all Ben's a lucky fellas. man, and your your boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, while you while you women were playing beer pong, my lovely wife was on a pole up front. Okay, <laughs> so. I see we like people that work in bars. Go to buffalogames.com. Ben, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's a version of beer pong that you can play, uh, with adults or, or a child. You know, Ben, there's a lot of psychological talk that, uh, no more fake cigarettes or those fake, uh, uh candy cigarettes or bubblegum cigars or whatever. And, and you're not supposed to pretend that it's booze. You know, it'll screw them up, make them alcoholics and stuff. Did you know that? Yeah, that's why it's uh we position it definitely as an adult game, but everybody uh everybody will play it their own way. But it's uh it's once possible. Donald Trump gets in, we don't have to worry about all that nonsense anymore. All that stuff's <laughs> out the window. All that stupid <laughs> shit. All right. Thank you very much, Ben. All right, thanks a lot, Jay. I appreciate you for having me. Thank you very much. Yeah. I mean besides everything else, the Democratic mayor of New York makes a headline announcement that you can pee in the street if you want to, or you can be publicly drunk and not much is going to happen to you. I look at that sometimes and I think whether you're a Democrat or Republican, that is just fucking stupid. That is just absolutely dumb. And so people get mad at shit like that. So a guy like Donald Trump comes along and he says, isn't that stupid or whatever? And people respond to it because, and you know, Rubio got into it for like, what, two speeches or whatever, but he's never going to do that again. They tried to get him to make fun of Donald Trump's small hands, Christina, his little hands. <laughs> and he says, I don't want to do that today. I want to talk about the issues. He should have just kept going, kept attacking him. Yep. Going after him. What did he say? He said, um, you ought to, you ought to fire the, whoever it was that did your, did your makeup. That's from the TV show, you know, you're fired. Told him that. Big laughs. But he did it too late. And he's too childish looking. If he gets up there with Hillary. Rubio is that he's always, I, I want to tell you a story about my great grandfather. I want to tell you a story about my great uncle. It's like, all right, I get it. Everybody suffered. Everybody's a family man. Stop it. Shush. Everything's a story about his family. Can you imagine Donald Trump on a stage with Hillary Clinton un unloading on her mm. about how she lives with a sexual predator? He will do that. That is crazy. That kind of shit. And he might win if he gets in there. He might win if he does it well enough. It's going to be vicious. And... He's probably never seen anything like that, that Clinton machine once it gets cranked up. You don't want to get in their way. Yeah. I mean it. Yep. You know, my new book, The Man Who Committed Suicide on a Washington Park Bench. It's my new, <laughs> my new book. <laughs> I love Hello, how, Frank. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I love how Go ahead. Trump, what? He just bullies uh, <clears throat> Marco Rubio all over Twitter. <laughs> and that's, have you been reading any of Donald Trump's No, tweets? no. no. <laughs> he keeps calling him a lightweight. He just takes him down in every tweet. It's so funny. It's almost like if, he, if he's not doing it, he throws, you know, the phone or says, hey, look, Jimmy, you do it for a while. Yeah. And they just shit on him. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just shit on him for a while. What a fun job that would be. To send out hateful, you know, tweets to people. Uh, Frank of Oakland. It's Jay Thomas. Jay? Jay? Yes. Yes. From Oklahoma. Oh, I'm sorry. It's OAK. I thought it was Oakland. Ah, uh, it's OK. It's Oklahoma. Yes, Frank, go ahead. Hey, uh, Trump scares the shit out of me. I don't Why? Buy, but just, he's crazy. Hmm. Don't you think he's just doing all? He's just doing all this for show. 
He knows he can't get in there and do all this. Can't do it. He can't do nothing without Congress. That's right. So don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I know. But I got a, I got a bus story I want to tell you about. A what story? A pot bus story. Crop dust? Like when you... Pot. A, oh, pot. What? A pot bust story. Oh, I thought it was uh, a pot bust. Yeah, I, I didn't know what he was saying. Crop duster? I don't know. What he, yes, Frank of Oklahoma. Go ahead. Sure. Me and my uh, two brother-in-laws and wife were in, down in near Warsaw, Missouri. And my brother-in-law got pulled over crossing the white line. They get out and do a field spray check on him. He passed field spray check. They saw some papers in his front pocket. They checked his uh, jean pocket, found a baggie. Well, then they come search the car. My other brother-in-law had an ounce of weed and a pipe. He stuck underneath the uh, front seat. And I had a pipe and a rope that was in, I don't know if you remember, the Marlboro Miles years ago. What a family. <laughs> yeah, you guys are loaded for beer. Okay, yeah. And we all three got busted. My wife had been drinking all mm-hmm. day. Then I heard drive the car to the... Sheriff's office. Of course, they put us all in handcuffs, and the Irish patrol took us in. And we get in there, and they took handcuffs off. And me and one brother-in-law had to go to the bathroom, and they let us go in the bathroom. And other brother-in-law, he's got a tiny bladder like my wife does. He's man, I gotta go to the bathroom. I said, "Go to the bathroom." I can't. Well, what's the punchline of this story? What's the punchline? Besides, said, you, you you people scare me more than Trump does. <laughs> All right, go go right to the end of the story. Go ahead. The reason Wayne didn't want to go into the bathroom because he had an ounce of weed down his pants in the shirt. Oh, that's a good story. That's a good one, Frank. Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> Tune in again next time for tell us your pot bust. Um, Crop dust story. <laughs> I don't know what he was saying. I'm glad you can't hear it either because I think, am I going fucking deaf? Yeah, no. I'm going to tell my pot pie sign. What? My pot pie sign. Uh, Bristol Palin says that Sailor Grace, her baby, looks just like her daddy, but will not identify the father. <laughs> Do you know that the dad the purported dad of that child is a Congressional Medal of Honor winner yes. from Afghanistan? Yes. I mean, how does that family, she she gets with this guy, and she she's so evil, she drags everybody down with her, and now both the fathers hate her guts. The guy left her while she was pregnant, right? How do you leave a woman... How do you leave your fiance when she's pregnant? I, what did you base your relationship on up to that point? Hmm. And I think the other husband is in and out of in and out of court with her for some reason. No, too. he was never a husband. Whatever they are, oh, right? And you know, the, when you guys talk about Trump, look at the millions of people that like. I mean, uh, hold it a second. How many more kids can Bristol Palin have? Oh, it's endless. I mean, that's like a and bottomless what? vagina. That's that's welfare children. She gets six hundred bucks a kid. There's no dad. I don't know that she has any job at all. And she no, has she does. Two... She's she's a public speaker. She makes all that money telling people not to have sex before marriage and not to get pregnant. She makes hundreds... that's not going so well, is but it? She no, makes hundreds going... of thousands of dollars doing that. Unbelievable. Really weird. How in this day and time do you let somebody go in there raw and rumble around inside of you? I mean, wh- wh- what are you like? How do you stop it? What are you, nuts? You got to wear a rubber or something? Or they're not allowed to? That's crazy. It's nuts. And now you got two other idiots that are going to be populating, you know, the country soon. That would be a great sign for abortion, right? Mm-hmm. Can't we... Can't we stop some of the idiots from coming out of, All of the, the other idiots? idiots? Yeah. 
Can't we stop new idiots from coming out of no, these other when idiots? This thing happens. It's all of a sudden. It's a gift from God. You know what I mean? That's what fixes it all. Is that this? I can't wait. Thing to, happens, look. And 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 everybody's against it. And then when it happens, well, it had to happen because it was a gift from God. Blessing. So you die, and there is a heaven. And when you go up there, you look through the door, and you see all of these assholes that you were thought were assholes down here, but yet somehow they they they're running heaven. Mm -hmm. And you see Sarah Palin, and you see Pat Robertson, and you see all of these religious nuts that you heard about and talked about when you were alive. Would you go into heaven? No. No, I, I wouldn't either. I don't want to be there. I wouldn't want to be there at all. I don't belong no. there. Those aren't my people. They're full of shit. Yeah. I can't hear that for the rest of my life. I can't even no. hear it now. If those people are in heaven, no thank you. You mean you want to burn in the fires yep. of hell? Yes, I do. Yep. I do. You know, in hell, they say that there's a big, like a, like a septic tank or something with everybody's poo-poo and pee-pee and everything in it. And they grab you and they throw you in there. What do you call yeah. Center? Yeah. And then, no. and then you know what, Christina? Uh, there's two people were in there and they were just floating around and one of them said, this isn't really so bad, you know, just floating around in a poo-poo. They said, oh, yeah, wait till the Orthodox Jews come in here with their motorboats. You like that one? <laughs> you get that one, Ira? Sorry. I'm get it? Good afternoon, Jay. Good afternoon. Some really late, Jay. You see, the really religious people, Christina, they were going to come through the cesspool and stir up the poo poo and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the poo poo, clean it up. Clean it up. Right. Ira, we were just talking about heaven and hell. What is your. Uh, Jews don't really. You know, you're kind of alive you today to and then. You don't go to hell. Oh, oh there is a heaven. Yes, I didn't know that. There is a heaven. Okay. That's right. Now. If you went in there and there weren't penny slots, would you go into heaven? Oh, yes, I would. Uh, really? Without the penny a... slots, I would go into heaven. Even no penny slots in heaven. But you saw penny slots were in hell. Would you go to hell instead? No, I wouldn't. I'd go to heaven. Really? They're not going to let you play, play. They're not going to let you gamble in heaven. You can't play when, nope. you're, when you're gone. You don't play at all. Oh. Ira. Oh, once you're dead, you're, there's no playing. Okay. Ira, if you were told that you were allowed to urinate on the sidewalk, would you? No, I wouldn't. Okay, good. Well, Blasio, you Blasio. know, your favorite, de Blasio, whatever, he's letting people pee on the streets, Ira, and publicly be drunk, and he's not going to arrest them. Did you read that in the paper today? Yes, I did. What do you think of that? No good. The, no good. The city is going to stink. People are going to pee everywhere. Pee everywhere is his right. And then you're going to see now, the peepees. When I come back to town, I want you and when Christine I, and I to go out. We're going to pull our pants down yes. and we're going to just pee on a corner. Will you go with us oh, and do that? Maybe I will. Yeah. Maybe I won't. <laughs> well, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. He's balls in. Well, Christina people, is going to squat down yes, over a manhole. Can I, I tell you one manhole. thing? What? Some people can't keep it in. Why? Because yeah. they're on water pills. People are on water pills and they can't <laughs> keep they it in. They can't hold it in. I got you. And so they have to just whip it out and then they're not going to go to jail, thank God. That I didn't know that. right. I didn't realize that. Well, now you, you know you straighten that out for me. Uh, let's go to Bradley who is in Florida. Hey, yes, Bradley, Bradley, it's Jay Thomas. how's everything over there? It's around yes, 76 Ira, degrees. Ira, the weather is wonderful. Thank you for asking. Wow. All right, go hey, ahead, Bradley. I, well, Jay, we got all this lunacy going on in, in, <clears throat> in on both sides of the fence as far as this campaign is concerned, and, of course, Trump's running his mouth. And mm -hmm. seems like the strong, the strong candidate, everybody, of course, would love for somebody to get the presidency and get in there and kick the mask for a change, but... Mm. How I just nobody can seem to explain how Hillary Clinton is still even functioning. This this lady is going to be charged with uh, like seven different counts of fraud and conspiracy, and I mean they put Martha Stewart in jail not for insider mm. trading, but because she told the FBI that she did not do it, and then they proved she did. They threw her in jail. 
Hillary Clinton told the FBI she had nothing on her server and they've got all this shit off her server. How is she going to run the country from jail? There's no way she's going to go to jail. And if you look at the emails that they're talking about, I mean, I looked at them. I was over the weekend. I was laid up. I have a, I broke a rib or some nonsense. Ow. And I'm, I know. Uh, it's called subligated. It's not completely broken, the tendon or something. Anyway, it hurts like yeah, a son of a bitch. Worse. It's terrible. But I read the whole thing, and I'll tell you why I do this. I think that it, unless I read the whole deal, I I can't really, you know, say one way or the other. I didn't see anything, and now they've released all of them. I think there were 62 emails that they were worried about. And so you – and I go ahead and read all you want to read about it. There's nothing there – that indicts anybody for doing something um, horribly negative uh, to to the United States secrets. I know they blame Benghazi on her, but um, Barack Obama, none of them wanted to send a bunch of troops in there and all that stuff. But we already had a Republican guy say the only reason why they're doing this mm. is, is to catch her, right? So he said it publicly and he got in trouble, right? I just don't think there's anything there. I don't, I don't think there's any... Um, um, you you have to you know I don't think there's any injury to the nation there at all. Well, it, and and I don't think any... most Americans you may you may get it, but I I don't get it at all. I, it's it's odd to me. And they now found out that Colin Powell and other state uh, Secretary of State they did the same thing. So and I don't know why that is. I have no idea. But well, I, think, um, I think we, I didn't see anything. Like... Did you see a what, what, what email did you hear about that you think she's going to jail for? Well, I've heard a couple times that that the FBI has 16, uh, 16 emails that are so classified they won't even release the name. The names. Re yeah, but they never left the server. They never left it. They weren't hacked. But the server was completely sold. unprotected. So it's right. Literally, that's according to the do law. You, hold it, Bradley. Do, Bradley, do you hope? Yes, sir. Do you hope she goes to jail? I, I kind of do. Okay, then I hope she goes to jail for you. But do I think she did anything? No, not at all. And I don't think right. she did anything so horrible. It's it's the stupidest thing I've ever. I mean, it's really a stretch. It's 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 really. A, I mean, I would think that you'd that they would look more at the Clinton Foundation, but exactly. that that's just people that don't like her want to want to hurt her. Hillary so, all yeah. the way. Hillary yeah. all the way. Ira, what about those emails she sent? It doesn't matter, Jay. She's gone. Doesn't matter. In. And right. That is it. All right. See there, Bradley. That's it. You don't Get like her. There. That's fine. I hope she goes to jail for you. <laughs> okay, I mean it. It's like that's because it has nothing to do with I, and, and why I the think, FBI Jay, is doing it. I have no idea. I don't know. Jay, I that's think if see. Trump wins the nomination, we're going to see a lot more dirty shit on on Hillary because he's the guy that's not scared to bring it up. Like, but he won't even I have to tell the truth. He doesn't have to even tell the truth. So that's oh. the fun of it. All right. See well, you later, cool. Bradley. All, All right, right. I got to go. You. Oh, is it, you know, it's a fucking political show. Uh, let's go to Matt, who is in Pennsylvania. Ah, uh, yes, Matt. It's Jay Thomas. Hey, Go Matt, ahead. how you doing? Hey, how yeah. you doing, Ira? Hey, Jay, I just want to let you know, when, when Christina is not taking your calls, your, your show is being produced by your call screeners. And it, I just, I get sad. What, is that, what does that mean? that mean? You're complaining about the call screener? Yes, because they, they, they decide if your call should go through or not. No. They don't Wait a minute. Forward. Bring her forward. Bring Brooke forward, who's working today. She's doing a very, very good job. <laughs> well, you today. stay out of it. <laughs> Yeah. Are um, you trying to produce this show and stop people from talking on this show, Brooke? Not the last time I checked. Well, I, God I, damn it, stop it. I, I called on Monday. The oh, the shut up, Matt. Shut up. I'm not going to have it. All right, get rid of him. All right, back to your post. <laughs> <laughs> back to your post. I give everybody what they want. It's not enough. She's doing a Hillary, Brooke is doing a great, great job, Jay. Hillary's going to go to jail. Do you want her to go to jail? Yes, I do. Well, I hope she goes to jail for you. It's like, okay, the call screener's producing the show. Well, get her over here. Tell her to stop doing it. No one is satisfied. I give you exactly what you want. Let's go to Bill of Arizona. Yes, Bill. What? Oh, Yes, Bill, go ahead. If Hillary goes to jail and she's president, yeah. all she's got to say is, pardon me, and they'll let her ride out. 
That's it. That's the title of my new book, Christina. Pardon me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> With a foreword by Caitlyn Jenner. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. The J. Thomas Show. We're completely stoned. On Sirius XM. Comedy Greats. Rediscover some of the most epic, historic, Grateful Dead live concerts. Each performance hand-selected by Deadheads as one of the finest in the band's 15-year history at New York City's legendary Madison Square Garden. New York, not the way. Catch unedited, complete garden party concert encores all next week, three times daily. On the Grateful Dead channel, Sirius XM 23. 30 year fixed rates in the threes. Anybody who's followed mortgage rates knows that you don't let rates in the threes get away. This is Dan Smith for Private Plus Mortgage. Rates have dropped, and our customers have been locking in 30 year refis in the threes. But even better, in many cases, Private Plus is paying the closing costs. So what's your goal? Lower your payment and save money? Pay off those credit cards? Or get cash to redo that kitchen? Now's the time to call Private Plus and let us show you your options. So if your rate's in the fours, or if you've refied in the last year, remember this. 30-year fixed rates in the threes. Call Private Plus Mortgage today at 866-888-0064. Refi or purchase. 866-888-0064. Private Plus Mortgage. Private Bank of Buckhead, 3 Piedmont Center, Atlanta, Georgia, 30305. Actual terms may vary. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and MLS number 758195. Call toll free for credit costs and terms. You know your kids are smart, but did you know enrolling them in Kumon can make them even smarter? Like 12-year-old Pranav. I've taken 11 college courses, either physics, calculus, or chemistry. The Kumon method is designed to put your children ahead of their peers in math and reading. I like the challenges that I faced in the Kumon program. To learn more, visit Kumon.com and join us for a free parent orientation. That is K-U-M-O-N.com. Kumon, where smart kids get smarter. The cloud. It may sound nebulous, vague, hazy, but the value of cloud computing for your workforce can be very real indeed. That's why thousands of organizations of all types and sizes are deploying in the Kronos Cloud, transforming the way they access workforce management solutions to reduce labor costs, improve workforce productivity, and minimize compliance risk. For a clear view of the Kronos Cloud, visit Kronos.com. Kronos, workforce innovation that works. Sunday is the birthday of the great D.L. Hughley. Donald Trump. Donald Trump wanted to host the Republican debate. Donald Trump hosting a debate is like Flavor Flav hosting a spelling bee. <laughs> to celebrate, we're playing his comedy all day and is unmasked with Ron Bennington at 6 p.m. Eastern. Happy birthday, D.L. Hughley. Sunday on Comedy Greats 94. <laughs> This is Sirius XM Comedy Grace. Same shit, different channel. It's the Jay Thomas Show on Sirius XM Comedy Grace. Oh, man. I think I have something called a uh, subligated rib. My... Um, I was doing yoga on Thursday, and I don't go to these classes very often. And my wife and people that do yoga, by the way, they tell you, "Well, you better not, uh, you better not just go to any old yoga. You got to go to this one where they know how to do." It. And I go, "You know, it's you know, I've done the hot yoga thing. That's not real yoga." I go, "Yeah, it is." And so I go into this class. And I'm doing the regular yoga poses and everything else. And I, I do the one where you put your body, like, on the floor, you know, and your body, let's say, it's going left to right. And then you take your other arm and you look up over your head back up to the ceiling, right? And then you and I, I felt a little tug under my right pectoral. But it wasn't a big deal. And, and I breathed and everything else, you know, and I finished the class. And then afterward, I think I went and I played golf or whatever. And the next morning, even before I came to work, last Friday, 
I was in real trouble. In fact, I was worried that I had something worse than just a pulled muscle. It was terrible. Mm. So I, I take uh, some, I have some hydrocodone from when I had my surgery. Oh, jeez. And it didn't do anything. Didn't even mess so you that, up? Didn't do anything. Maybe it's Ooh. old. Yeah. So I took, so then I took a couple of Advil and I came into work. Now you're flying. So, then I did acupuncture and all of that. But now, and I think, I think they pulled my rib. I'd have to go to the doctor today. So I call the woman, you know, hello, you know, doctor's office. And I say, I'd like to see uh, the doctor today. Um, I, I, I think I have a subligated rib. And she goes, um, how'd you get that? How did, how'd that happen? I said, doing yoga. And she started laughing at me on the phone. I don't think I've ever been laughed at. And I said to her, and she's one of these, hi, Leanne, can I help you? She's like Miss Friendly, right? Right. So I said, hey, Leanne, uh, can, can you, can I see, uh, Dr., you know, Mark, uh, later? Oh, certainly, Jay, certainly. What's the problem? And I did my thing, you know, and she goes, oh, my God, like that. Starts <laughs> laughing. <laughs> it's not funny. It hurts like hell. And, and she didn't funny, even apologize. Wait, no, she on. didn't apologize. She just kept going. She kept talking. Well, she knows that you've got a great ah. sense of humor. The J. Thomas. She Who can... knows? Yeah. I could flip at any minute. <laughs> it is a little funny, though. Just yeah. a little bit. Uh, let's go to Captain D, who was in Texas. Yes, Captain D, go ahead. Hey, Captain hey, uh... D, how you doing? I'm doing good, buddy. So much self. I'm kind of a new listener, new fan. Uh, just wanted to call and say what's up. And uh, if you guys caught her, ask, ask your opinion about Seth Meyers. Uh, he had a really funny bit last night on on his show with him being a fake moderator and just taking snippets from uh, each candidate on their responses. You know, everybody says that out of everyone that's, you know, Jimmy Fallon is like, are you getting over him now, Christina? Jimmy Fallon? I was is he never too under cutesy? him. Oh, you weren't into him? No, I like Jimmy uh, Oh, Kimmel, Kimmel. I like Kimmel, too. Um, and and then, um, you know, Colbert is a complete flop. Oh, Colbert, they should kick him off. <laughs> He's a complete be, flop. You would be better, Jay. Than you know what I'm going to start anybody. saying? I used to go, no. You did, I would. You I'd would. be better than all of those fucks. Every single one of them. All of them. What do you think of that? Instead of this, no, I shouldn't. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Are you kidding? What they ought to do is, is one host ought to come on, Captain D, and shit on the other host like Donald <laughs> Trump. That's what I would do. I would come on and go, hey, hey, by the way, if you don't want to watch me, why don't you go, um, why don't you go watch Jimmy Fallon stick his nose up, uh, you know, Tom Hanks' ass. While Tom Hanks uh, shits Nicole Kidman out on him, if that's what you think is funny. Now there's a visual. And, and, go, and, and look at the camera and go like this. And if you think that's good, go on. I don't need you. Go on. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah, that's what I would do. Uh, that's what I would. Appreciate uh, Donald it. Trump is my fucking leader now. That's the way I'm going to start acting. What do you think of that? <laughs> I love for it. Trump. Uh, yeah, stump for Trump. You know what that would be? I'd have I'd do stump for Trump, and my bit on my talk show would be uh, people with just one leg. <laughs> They'd be stumps for Trump. Stand sitting on a stump, on a tree. Sitting stump. on a stump, stumps for Trump. You would do that one too. <laughs> or you'd ask people a question. Okay, now Ira, watch this. I'm going to ask you a question, but you don't answer it. You just go, uh, uh, duh, like that when I ask you. Are you ready, uh, Ira? Uh, duh. No, okay. no, not yet, not yet. Here okay. we go. One. All right, so Ira, uh, what? Uh, hold it a second. What does E equals M C squared mean? Oh, oh no. that would be stumps for Trump, Christina, <laughs> right there. We would, we would stamp him, but it says you would stump somebody. You'd stump him with a yeah, question. With a stamp. And you'd be on all of it. Uh, let's go to Larry, who's in New Jersey. Hey, uh, Larry, yes, Larry. How you doing? What part of Jersey are you from? Hey, how you doing, guys? Good. Um, what what, what, what part of Jersey? What part of Jersey are you from, Larry? Uh, I'm actually not from Jersey. I moved here about twelve years ago. I'm actually born in Manhattan a lot more years ago than I. You know, you know. Hold it a second. We don't need all of that. 
Okay. No, you know. Uh, you are from New Jersey. You've been there a long time. If you didn't want to be from New Jersey, you should have stayed wherever the hell you wanted to be from. Now that you've been there for over, over a decade, over a decade, you are from there whether you like it or not. I like it just fine. So where are you? Well, from? you didn't sound like it. Where are you I from? Pa- I pa- please forgive me. Well, where are you from? Uh, Bergen County. Okay. Ira's sleeping. He didn't hear. Now, uh, Ira's falling asleep. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, well, well yeah. that's fine. I, I didn't know yeah. my job to keep him awake. Uh, well, you're born you know on what, Larry? Larry? Your you're job is to shit out of him. Yeah. What? What do you want? Okay, it's just real simple. I just wanted to change gears for a second and ask you something, uh, man to man, as a guy in a relationship, to see if I'm crazy or not. There's something that I like to call when yes is not good enough. And it sort of goes like this. Yeah. She says, uh, honey, will you take out the garbage? And I say, sure, no problem, I'll do it right away. And she keeps fucking talking. Well, you know, because the garbage is really smelling and you haven't taken it out. Hold on a minute. Is this who you married? Wait a minute. Is this who you married? Uh, No, but we're together for 16 years and I love her. You know what? It's like like you living in New Jersey. You're never (laughs) fucking satisfied. You married her. Don't, Don't call me because you know what I would do? I would go, hey, shut the fuck up, okay? Get rid of him. Get the I feel- fuck rid of him. Get rid of him. <laughs> I know it's gooey. I know the band could fall apart. Why don't you go inside and fucking shove something in yourself till I get this done? Jesus. Where are you from? Well, I've lived here for 12 years, but I'm really from <laughs> from Saginaw, Michigan. Five yeah, miles over the bridge. <laughs> and I told her I'm going to take the garbage out, but she keeps talking. What should I do? Tell her to shut the fuck up. And let's say you are a woman and the guy keeps talking. Go, hey, Harvey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and if... Your relationship can't take that, then it wasn't very much to begin with. Uh, Christina, if your boyfriend told you to shut the fuck up, would you guys break up over that? Oh, no. No. No, no. of course not. No. Never. The nurse laughs at my injury, and that doesn't cause me not to go back to her. Jim of South go Dakota. Go to a different doctor, Jay. Yeah, South Dakota just passed something today. What did they pass? They did something horrible. Um... What was it, Jim? I'm not sure. I have no idea. I'm a truck driver. You... I live there, but I have no idea what they do there. No, they did. They did. So, Christina or uh, 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 Brooke, find out. Somebody, they did something in South Dakota with, oh, no, the bathrooms. Uh, they did a thing where Trans- no matter what. Gender bathroom bill. Whatever you were born with, you got to go into that bathroom, Jim. Oh, shit. I had no idea about that the one. bill. How many, uh, we, we only have a couple that have called us. How many transgender truck drivers have you run across in your years driving? I, you know what? I've been out here, honestly, Jay, 20 years. I've never personally met, but I've seen them at the fuel pumps or something coming or going. Uh, I would mm-hmm. say probably five or six. That's a lot. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's not something you see every day, obviously, but mm-hmm. it, it's, it's when you do see it, I mean, you can tell, and, and I don't care one way or the other. You know, uh, it doesn't It's like a big you. guy, a big truck driver looking guy, and he's Basically, wearing some yeah. sort of Yeah, he, he's, uh, I, I seen one one time, he had long red hair, uh, mm-hmm. sleeveless t shirt on, and a mini skirt and sneakers. You know, it would seem that you could say stuff to a transgendered, a person that had been a man that you couldn't say to a woman. You know what I'm saying? It seems like if I was at a truck stop and and I went over to, let's say the guy's like 6'3", and he's got the dress going, but, you know, you can he's been working, and you can tell. And I would walk over there as a man, and I would look over there, hey, cutie, I'd like to get it. I'm not kidding you. You couldn't do this to a regular woman. Hey, baby. How'd you like to have a little salami for dinner like that? <laughs> Christina, that, you could probably, you could do that. I, I don't know, think I you would get called out for sexual harassment because yeah, they have the guy true. in them. You know what I'm saying? That's you know? true. That's true. Hey, you hey, you there on number seven. You think I should, hey, I see you're pumping high test. 
How about if I start pumping down low on you? Huh? They're not going to say anything. They're going to laugh. They're going to wiggle their man ass at you. Well, you know what? I mean, you, to be in to be in this industry and to not worry about what somebody thinks and, and, and to come out here and do this job and, and, and do what you got to do. I mean, that's whether you're a man or a woman. Uh, you know that yeah. that takes that takes a lot. It takes a lot. You know, so I'd like to be a truck driver and have half of me dressed as a man and the other half a woman. That would throw them <laughs> at the truck stop. All right, All right. you're from South Dakota. Watch where you pee, Jim. Thank you very much. Let's go to the United Kingdom. Let's go across the pond on line two. Margaret, welcome to the show. Line two, please. Okay, Thomas, it's Dame Margaret Smith. Uh-huh. And I'd like to tell you that I've seen quite a few Tootsies in my day. That's what we call them in the U.K., Tootsies, after a good friend of mine did a film Get rid, her, get rid of her, get rid of her, get rid of her, get rid of her. Because she was a woman, Christine, I gave her a couple of extra seconds. Equal. I don't even think that was a man. Ira, you do a better woman's voice than that, don't you? Oh, yes, I do, Jay. Very sultry. Oh, what a broadcaster you are. Unbelievable. Thank you. You, you broke me in. Ooh. I sure did break you in, girl. That's right. I broke you in good, girl. Yeah. That's right. I broke that radio cherry, didn't I? That is right. Do you see that, Christina? Men, that, that, this will be a lot more fun with transgendered, you know, uh, women that were yeah. men's because we can do our man talk with them without getting in trouble. Well, his, uh, yeah, let's yeah, his radio cherry mm -hmm. wasn't the first one you broke either. Hello. Mine, too. You know, when you talk like that, it doesn't make you seem marriageable. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really trying. I'm not going for marriage. Yeah, I know. Women that aren't married always say that. I mean, I already was marriageable, and now I'm just not. You're too rough. You're too rough. <laughs> you really ought to marry one of those truck drivers. They're probably out there waiting for you. Big Why one. are you trying to marry driver. me off so quickly? I don't know. What's going on? I don't know. I'm tired of you living in sin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go to Mark of Pennsylvania. Hello, Mark. Hey, Jay. I just wanted to let you know, the uh, South Dakota Congress, they did pass yeah. the bill, but the South Dakota governor vetoed it. Oh, wait a minute. It they passed law. the bill. They passed the bill so you uh, had to stay in, in, the, in the gender bathroom you were born in? Correct, and then the governor vetoed it so you can use whatever bathroom you oh. identify with. Will they be able yes, to so override that? Override that thing? Um, I don't know how much, how much do they need sixty percent. Uh, I don't know what it is in the state government. You know what's funny? I mean, it, I mean, how many votes? Is isn't this so incredibly silly? First of all, if a person is identifying themselves as transgendered they got enough shit on their plate you know what i mean without the congress of people where there are no transgendered people in the state congress there probably and the governor's not you know what i mean what what and they've probably wasted months on this and and sure. that to be honest people don't like to hear this mark they really don't even though they may agree with it or whatever it's a lot of fucking time and money for something where is somebody going to take a leak it's going to happen what once in eight or nine hundred thousand times that that's even going to come up in south dakota and the way i see it is there's a lot of religious people that don't have sex trying to make a defecating and urinating uh situation into a sexual situation when it isn't it's just no, people going to the bathroom and i mean a lot of countries <laughs> There is no men's and women's bathrooms. It's just a community bathroom. Wow. You squat down over a hole and just go right there. Ara, uh, how, do, how do you feel? You're in a men's bathroom. And and Caitlyn Jenner, well, no, wait a minute. Caitlyn Jenner wouldn't come into the bathroom. Uh, you're in a men's bathroom, and a woman who used to be, I mean, a man who used to be a woman comes in to go to the bathroom. How would you feel? Very about good. I you would like that. that okay, I there you go. I tell you what, uh, she or he would be in for, in for quite a treat with Ira in the next stall, Christina. Where are you from? Yes. 
No, the I growlers. No, I wouldn't. As, how about this? One? How about, how about this? <laughs> Where are you from, may I ask? <laughs> I don't think I'd have a problem if she, unless she put her uh, leg up on the wall and tried to use the urinal. <laughs> I wouldn't care what anybody did. They're trying to pee, for God's sakes. I mean, really. Exactly. You're exactly, you're exactly correct. You're, you're, you know, for God, you're trying to release. Worried about something that's not happening. How I about this? We've got bigger problems you're, here in New York when anybody can pee anywhere. But wait a minute. Anywhere. They're trying to re they're trying to release their God given fluids. Oh, okay. Oh, and their God given solid wastes. That's what I would start saying. Ah, uh, Christina, do we need to go to a break or something? No, nope, we're good. Okay. Uh, let's go to yeah, Big Ben. Ready? Let's go to news from over there. News from over there. Okay. Big Ben, please. Yep. All right. Let's take our news from over there, uh, 747 uh, J. Thomas Jet to Germany. Let's go to Germany. Here we go. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've been reading a lot about Germany. You can turn it down a little bit. You can turn it down a little bit. Uh, Ari, you know how to yodel? You know any yodeling? Any yodeling at all? What's that, Ari? Get a little closer to the microphone, would you please, sweetheart? Uh, yeah, okay. So, here's the deal. You, you've got all of these immigrants that have left Syria... Uh, they've, uh, in the Middle East, they've, they've left, um, various countries, Morocco, everything else, and they're, they're just pouring in to Germany. And now they're deciding that they would rather go back to war and misery. And, uh, the refugees, beside being disillusioned about poor housing and lack of economic opportunity and distrust of the citizens and all of that, the food is terrible, Christina. Now, a lot of these folks are Muslims, and, and some are just Middle Easterners. What they can't believe is how many animals the people in Germany eat. Even even Christians or people that aren't don't have a what do you call it dietary restrictions. They they cannot. First of all, they say everything they make in Germany is one made of animal, but two tastes awful. Uh, now they've tried to attract the people from the Middle East by, by making a curry worst. Oh. Like a bratwurst, oh. except they put curry on that it. That is the worst. And they got a picture here, Christina, of it looks like some sort of potato mm -hmm. with uh, mac and cheese on <gasps> top of what? it. Say what? It does look pretty delicious. Oh, boy. And then next to it, it says it was a nasty meat. And it looks like some sort of a pork dish that has seasonings and um, and all kind of goo on top of. But they're right. Everything I'm seeing that's German is pretty uh, pretty sloppy. So uh, many people are going back to Iraq, where they now have a real chance of being blown up by ISIS, rather than tolerating another day of German slop. Uh, you've been listening to news from over there. Turn it up, please. Turn it up. Ira, do some yodeling. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, music to my ears. Let's go to Bill who's in Texas. Another hey, Bill, exciting... what did you think about that music? <laughs> All right. Uh, he's, he's Bill, on come on, Bill. Come Bill. On, Bill. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Come back, Bill. Bill. Bill, can you hear us? What is the matter with these people? Yeah. You know what? There he Bill, is. Bill, it's Jay Thomas. Can you turn your radio down and talk to us, please? How embarrassing. I got it. I got it down. What do you want? Well, I mean, no, no, you know what I meant? Hello, Bill. Welcome to Sirius XM. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Welcome to Sirius XM. Um, uh, go on. Hey, Bill, how were you treated by the call screener? We've had some complaints, and I just wanted to check. Well, uh, 
I, I didn't, didn't turn me wrong, but my name's not Bill. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? Anthony. Anthony. Anthony, hold on a minute. Uh, bring Brooke back to the microphone, please. Um, Bill, you said your name was Bill, so I don't know why you're saying Anthony now. Wait a second. Are you calling? Wait a minute. Are you calling? Wait, he's a customer. Are you calling a paying customer a liar? Bill, she says that you said your name was Bill. Why are you lying to get her in some sort of trouble that your name is Anthony? No, she's never, ever asked me. What my name was. You know something? Yes, you're Bill from Texas. You, you don't even sound like an Anthony, so I agree with Brooke. Ira, does this sound it like an Anthony like to you bill. or a, or a Bill? What does it, it sound sounds like? like a Bill. You're a Bill for Christ's sakes, <gasps> Anthony. Well, who's oh. named Anthony in fucking Texas? Nobody. <laughs> oh, I'd like you to meet my friend Anthony Spears. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Wait a minute. And now the next president of the United States, Anthony Cruz. No, fuck. No, there's no Anthony. All right, Bill, what do you want? What do you want, Bill? Well, I was actually uh, new to the show, so... Uh, I was listening in, and then you guys... Well, let me tell you something about this show. If you call up and you have a name that we don't think fits you or the area you live in, we change your fucking name. Don't you ever call here as Anthony unless you move to Massachusetts. Europe. What? Okay. I'm, or Europe. Thank you. I don't know what he... I thought he was saying you're a something, Christina, and you stopped him. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't stop him at all. That was him himself. But he was saying European. I thought yeah, he you're a poof. But like you put your hand yeah. in his mouth. <laughs> no, no. So, Bill of Texas, what did you call about? No, I was just calling uh, about the uh, previous, about the previous, uh, yeah, what you the transgendered uh, bathroom. I I was yeah. in New York and I was in the toilet, and a guy and his girlfriend came in with their bags and everything else in the lobby of this uh, gay hotel, and or I don't know, not gay, but it's open, called out. And so it was weird to be sitting on the pot and hear this woman talking, and finally she said she didn't want to go to the bathroom in there. So it is odd. Yeah, yeah it's very odd. It does, it does kind of, you know, you hear a woman's voice. I mean, that yeah. is a, that kind of puts a little damper on your on your moment there. Say, Ira, you're, you're, you're about to take a poo-poo, or you're just standing at the urinal, and a woman walks in and you hear her voice. Would that make your poo-poo go back inside or your pee-pee not want to come no, out? No, Jay. <laughs> well, I'll tell, you something, no. I'll tell you something that happened to me. I was actually sure. just walking into a restroom, and I went directly to, to the stall, and I sat down. And after I'm getting getting going, I hear a woman's voice, and I realize I just walked into the woman's restroom. That's you were in the wrong bathroom. I'm taking yeah. a poop, and there's a woman outside. Um, and I'm going you know, you don't want to hear something? You could have gotten in trouble. I, I know. You know, I, you know what's weird? I've done that myself, and that my biggest fear is that I'm, you know, in there and my dick's flapping around or whatever, and the woman <laughs> opens the stall, and I've just made a mistake. And if she starts screaming, what are you going to say? I mean, I, I, no one's going to believe you. I made a mistake. I didn't, you know. Rescue, put you in jail, and brand you a sex offender or something. What are you doing? What are you, you know what else scares me? When you're in the bathroom by yourself and a little kid comes in by himself. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, I just want to run out of that restroom. I, I do. I That makes me nervous. Really does, nervous. Because, you know, in the movies, those little kids would go like this. Hey, mister. He me. <laughs> hey, mister. Suppose I went outside and told my told my dad you touched me. What? You better give me $10, mister. Oh, shit. I'd give that fucking kid everything. All right. Thank you, Bill. Here you go. Here's my... Uh, yeah, take it all. Here, take my wallet. Here, take this rubber. Take it all. All right. I can. I hear all sorts of... Uh, Christine, I'm hearing all sorts of jabbering in the back of the room. What's going on? What's all that jabbering? No jabbering, just call screening. It certainly sounded like jabbering to me. Oh, you were doing some call screening back there? Well, there is call screening being done here, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, Brooke is doing a marvelous, marvelous job. If people well, are going to give her well, apparently, wrong names, what yeah. good is it? People called in with the wrong names as a joke, but I didn't think it was funny. Everybody wants to call in and yell at Brooke on the air because they think it's funny for your show, Jay. I don't like it. 
<laughs> well, when I was speaking to Brooke and she said that Christina was working the board, well, well she was right, Christina. Is hey, Brooke, let me tell you about these people. Yeah. You know when when you do something for a little kid and, and you do it and you play the game and everything else and then the kid goes, do it again. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, I just did it. So you do it one more time, and then the kid goes, do it again. Right. That's what these assholes are like. Right? Yep. You do one little thing that may or may not be cute or interesting, and they want to do it over and over and over and over. Oh, you know what? I'm. That's why I have so many replays. Yeah. <laughs> They want it over. That's what they ought to call this place. Sirius XM over and over and over again. All right. I mean, that's the that's the whole fucking world here. Well, hell, let's just rerun it for four years. What? Yeah, rerun it for four goddamn years. Yeah. Now listen. Before the Cinderella story. Georgia State has shot Taylor. Before the bracket buster. Say the lane jumper for the win. Yeah! You first have to make it to the dance. College basketball's biggest conference tournaments are on Sirius XM. Put on your dancing shoes, baby. We're going again. Follow your team as they take the first step on the road to the Final Four. Final Four. And get expert analysis along the way on Sirius XM College Sports Nation Channel 84. Find our complete conference tournament schedule on SiriusXM.com slash sports. Michelle Tafoya here for Good Look, Inc. Guys, April 15th is coming and only two things in life are inevitable. Taxes and hair loss. In fact, going bald and paying taxes have a lot in common. They're both annoying, they both gradually strip away something valuable, and they both leave you feeling kind of powerless. It's time to do something about it. Not the tax code, your head. Talk to Good Look, Inc. and find out why people from all over the world go to in-confidence style the ladies love. I've personally seen it, felt it, and love the tight buzz looks of men who've had it done. There are no drugs, no surgery, and no maintenance. GLI's unique process transforms your head and your life in just one visit. Check out the photos at goodlookinc.com today, then schedule a free one-on-one -on -one consultation to start the process. And if you do get a tax refund, invest it in something worthwhile. You. Get the good life with Good Look Inc. Go to goodlookinc.com. That's goodlookinc.com. You know your kids are smart, but did you know enrolling them in Kumon can make them even smarter? Like 12-year-old Pranav. I've taken 11 college courses, either physics, calculus, or chemistry. The Kumon method is designed to put your children ahead of their peers in math and reading. I like the challenges that I face in the Kumon program. To learn more, visit Kumon.com and join us for a free parent orientation. That is K-U-M-O-N.com. Kumon, where smart kids get smarter. When you've got a growing business, every hire is huge. That's why you need Indeed.com, the world's number one job site. With over 180 million visitors a month, your next star employee is searching on Indeed. You can post a job on Indeed for free today. Just go to tryindeed.com to get started. It's easy. Create a job listing in less than five minutes and start receiving qualified applicants as soon as today. Visit tryindeed.com to post a free job. Certain limitations and terms apply. Sirius XM presents Jim Norton's Mouthful of Shame Tour. Oh, I like that. It's your chance to see Jim Norton perform live in a city near you. Go to SiriusXM.com slash Jim Norton. Fill out the form, pick the city, and you can win tickets to see Jim Norton live. Ooh. Simple, easy peasy. No purchase necessary, but you have to do it before May 2nd. Jim Norton's Mouthful of Shame Tour. Presented by Sirius XM. Well said. You're listening to Comedy Greats on Sirius XM. Sirius XM Comedy Greats. Playing only the best from the legends of comedy. Channel 94 and on the Sirius XM app.